All right, friends. So we already added IDs and indexes to our collections and linked the two collections in our project. We are now in the final stage of our database setup. The next thing we want to do is to create the schema and open an instance of the database so that we can interact with it within the app in the next videos. So the first thing we need to do is to define what a schema is. A schema is a logical representation of how data is organized and how the collections are related. In our case, we divided our data into two groups. We, the first group is a description of the routine. The second group is a description of the category. And how these two collections are related is that the routine has a property that references the category collection. Now, to create the schema, we'll need to run a code generator called the build runner that will generate the database files directly into the local platform. When we say local platform in our case, since we're creating a mobile app, we're referring to the Android platform or the iOS platform. But before we can create it, we need to add a particular statement to each of our collect that files that hold our collections to point out to ESA the files that we'll need to go through the code generation process. So let's go back to the project. All right. So in each of the collections, we're going to add a part statement specifying the file name that we want to be generated for this collection. So we'll add part and the name should be equivalent or the same as the class file name. So we'll write routine.g, meaning that it should be generated dot dot. Same case for the category part category and we're done. But now the reason why we're experiencing errors is because we haven't yet we haven't yet uh, run the build runner, which will generate for us. In this case, there are no files like this that do exist. So they'll be generated once we're able to build, to run the build runner. All right. So there are two packages that we will need, the ESA generator and the build runner. So for us to install, we'll go to the VS Code um, new terminal. And first we'll install the ESA generator. So we'll run flutter pub add ESA generator. Enter. So this will take a minute. So it has been able to download and install. If you go to our pubspec.yaml file, you'll be able to see the ESA generator and the version that we have is 2.2.1. So let's go and add the build runner. Flutter, pub, add, build, runner, enter. This will also take a minute. And as you can see, our package has been added on the pub spec and we're using the version 2.1.7. All right, so that now that we have generated, uh, now we need to run a command that now will generate all these database files uh, that, we ca that, that currently do not exist. That's why we have an error. So to do that, we'll run flutter pub run build runner build. That will take a minute. Okay. 
As you can see, it has two actions to perform, which represents the two files that it needs to create. And they're completed. And as you can see, the errors are gone because now we have our generated files. Let's close the terminal so that you can see how it looks. So this is what user database understands. What we just did on our side was just give a description, a basic, but now this is what ESA uses to actually manipulate or respond to some of the requests that will send to the database. It should not be changed whatsoever. So now, now that we have generated the database files into the local platform, we can now open a database instance that you can now play around with in the application. Okay, so opening a database instance, what it generally means is that we want to run the database environment on the local platform now. And now that the database is created, we want to run it by setting up a memory of the local database that will manage these DB files and our requests as well. So we leave the collections folder now and come to this main file. It's the, which we call the entry point of any application. And we're going to create our instance on the main function. Uh, so we'll just write it before the run up function. So how we'll start is we'll create a variable called ESA, final ESA. You can give it whichever name that you want. Then we'll call ESA and say ESA dot. Before that, there's an important factor. We want to set this main function as a sync because there are functions inside here that will require to be weighted. We will require to wait for their response before we proceed to the run up function. So final ESA. So this will call await ESA. Sorry, oh yes, ESA. Let it import into the project, open. So we want to open an instance, right? And in this function open, there are different properties. There's the, you can set up the schemas, directory, name, relaxed, durability, and inspector. But in our case, we're just going to use two of the properties, the schemas and the directory. So for the schemas, we're going to pass the routine schema, if you can remember, and the category schema. Okay. We just need to import this. Okay. Then the next one is a directory, but we need to specify a directory within the Android platform or within a local platform. To do that, we use a package called path provider. So we'll need to go back to our terminal and add that package. To add that package, we run Flutter pub add path provider enter this will take a minute This package will help us set up a directory as to where we'll be storing our data. Because remember, ESA is a local database. It's our database where that stores data in a cloud or in a server. It stores it in the local platform that you're actually creating it for. So we need to specify a directory where data will be stored. So our path provider has been installed and we're using the version 2.0.9. So we can close, close this terminal and import our package. So it's import package path provider, path provider dot dot. And now we want to give it a variable, initialize a directory. So we say final dir is equals to await get application support because mostly do application documents directory, that di directory is when like the user of the platform, him or herself uh, adds uh, documents into that directory, but we want one that can support for data that's actually generated outside the user's uh, 
um, capability. Uh, so in our case, you find it's our app that's generating. It's not a user who is actually generating automatically manually. It's an app that generates this data and stores. So the most preferable directory is the application support directory. So now that we have that, we can now add our second property, which is directory, and add dir dot path. And basically we just created an instance of an ESA database called ESA. So this is what we're actually going to use throughout the project. We're going to add it into, uh, into the main um, page or the main uh, page that we're going to create our app. But for now, we're going, to, uh, we're going to leave it here, but we're going to use it within the project itself. So throughout the lesson four to seven, we have been designing and creating the database so that it's ready to be used by the app. So next up, we'll now build the structure of the app, as you recall. We're going to build this, the structure of the app as we earlier saw in a previous video. And yeah, so let's take a quick pause right now and we'll continue in the next video.